temperatures will make it into the lower 80s. Let's talk about the Quarterfest forecast on Sunday around 90 degrees. It's going to be hot, hot, hot. And your seven day outlook does show unsettled weather moving into the day on Monday. But then next week, already gearing up for Memorial Day, we're going to heat our temperatures up back into the middle to upper 80s by Thursday and Friday. And on the 10 day temperature trend, another 90 degree day. Looks good to me. You love it. I sure do. Summer is almost here. Bring it on. All right, thanks, Steve. Yep. Well, President Trump is suggesting he wants to cool tensions with Iran. We are learning new details about the intelligence that escalated those tensions. Iran's leaders believe the U.S. is getting ready to attack them, prompting Tehran to prepare for possible counterstrikes. The U.S. claims to have images of Iranian commercial vessels it believes are carrying missiles. Well, the focus now is on the administration's next move. President Trump says he hopes the U.S. is not on a path to war with Iran. And we're also learning more about Michael Flynn's cooperation with Robert Mueller, including a voicemail recording that was handed over as evidence. CNN's Lauren Fox reports. Newly unsealed court records show that convicted former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn informed Robert Mueller's investigators that people connected to the Trump administration or Congress contacted him multiple times, potentially attempting to obstruct the investigation. Mueller wrote those people could have affected both Flynn's willingness to cooperate and the completeness of that cooperation. Flynn giving Mueller's team a voicemail from President Trump's personal attorney to Flynn's lawyer. He says, if there's information that implicates the president, then we've got a national security issue. We need some kind of heads up. And reminds Flynn's lawyers of Trump's fondness for his now convicted advisor. I think it's very clear that this further supports the uh, urgent need of the committee to hear from Mr. Mueller directly to get the fully unredacted report and all of the supporting materials. In the Mueller report, he indicates the voicemail could have obstructed the investigation, but he could not determine whether the president was personally involved. Meantime, the White House continues to stonewall efforts by House Democrats to look into possible obstruction. White House counsel Pat Cipollone called the congressional probes an attempt to harass political opponents. In a new letter to Cipollone, House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler says, your failure to comprehend the gravity of the special counsel's findings is astounding and dangerous. The president's posture now is making it impossible to rule out impeachment or anything else. This flies in the face of 200 years of history and would go, if accepted, would go a long way toward making the president, uh, any president, a dictator. But Attorney General Bill Barr appearing to back the White House and Republicans in the House who are calling to investigate the origins of the Mueller probe. If we're worried about foreign influence, for the very same reason, we should be worried about whether government officials abuse their power. And I'm not saying that happened, uh, but I'm saying that we have to look at that. Meanwhile, a House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff is threatening to take what he calls enforcement action against the DOJ for not complying with his subpoena for intelligence information from that Mueller report. Well, the Chinese tech company Huawei is responding after the Trump administration effectively banned it from the U.S. The company says this move will backfire, hurting thousands of American businesses and consumers. Huawei is the world's first telecom equipment maker. The Trump administration believes Huawei poses a spying risk to Western technology infrastructure. The latest move against Huawei comes amid a worsening trade war between the U.S. and China. Well, the immigration plan unveiled by President Trump includes a proposal to allow public donations to pay for his long-promised southern border wall. A fact sheet released by the White House yesterday evening says the president's proposal, quote, will safeguard our homeland by continuing to add the 400-plus miles of border wall underway in strategic locations. Well, this morning, President Trump tweeted, all people that are illegally coming into the U.S. now will be removed from our country at a later date as we build up our removal forces and as the laws are changed. Please do not make yourselves too comfortable. You will be leaving soon. Well, Taiwan is now the first Asian nation to pass a law approving same-sex marriage. This morning's vote by the legislature allows same-sex couples full legal marriage rights. In 2017, Taiwan's constitutional court said the constitution there does allow same-sex marriages, and it gave parliament two years to adjust those laws accordingly. That law takes effect next Friday.
And on Capitol Hill, House Democrats are set to pass sweeping legislation that extends civil rights protections to LGBT people. The Equality Act will prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Republican opponents say that bill jeopardizes religious freedom by requiring acceptance of a particular ideology about sexuality and sexual identity. Well, 34 black women are expected to graduate from West Point next week. It'll be the largest class of African-American women to graduate together in the military academy's history. This class will also have West Point's highest number of female Hispanic graduates ever. And Vice President Mike Pence will speak at the graduation ceremony set for May 25th. Well, investigators say at least 177 male students were sexually abused by an Ohio State University team doctor who died back in 2005. The university released findings today from a law firm that investigated claims about Richard Strauss for the school.